All right, everyone. Uh, this one had to be delayed by a few days, but we are doing it. So, for the month of April, our theme will be Mega Evolutions from Kanto. So, we'll be doing Mega Venusaur, then Charizard Y, Blastoise, and Pinsir. So, today we are doing Mega Venusaur. So, hopefully you all had plenty of time to look over the stats. The move pool is exactly the same. <coughs> well, not exactly the same. The level up moves are modern Venusaur's level up moves but the TMs are relatively the same and uh, we're gonna have the ability thick fat so we actually take half damage from fire and ice which are both of our weaknesses so that's gonna be really good plus uh, our defense and special defense are gonna be really good so we're gonna be very bulky so <clears throat> kind of looking forward to how this goes yeah why don't we get started All right, three, two, one, go. Also, hello, uh, Axew and Annie. How are y'all doing? Still weak to flying and psychic and Heracross, but those are manageable. Uh, the four times weakness to flying for Heracross? I don't know how Heracross would handle flying moves. And also, uh, to fit with the theme of Mega Evolutions, uh, since uh, most Mega Evolutions cannot hold items with the exception of... Hold on, I think the mute is... Hold on, I'm gonna... Oh. The music's not sounding too loud for you guys, is it? So anyway, what I was going to say was, since most Mega Evolutions, except Rayquaza, cannot hold items, I will not be allowed to give a held item to this thing at all. We're just going to pretend it's holding a Mega Stone. I think because that'll fit in with the theme. You were talking about Venusaur's weaknesses. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, if we're only taking half damage, we're effectively not weak to Fire and Ice. Although weaknesses do double damage, so... I think instead of taking double damage, we only take 1.5 times damage. So it's not going to be that bad. But... Psychic and flying will still be issues, especially the Pidgeot on the rivals team. Like, anything weak to flying is going to have a hard time with the rival fights. Come on, R dude. Come on, Rattata. Where are you? Dude. You know what's funny? Uh, these, the Pidgey and Rattata here are 50% each. Like, sometimes I'll get the Pidgey and Rattata within a few encounters, but then I'll just encounter, like, seven Pidgeys in a row. There we go. I just like it when that happens. Like, I'm pretty sure Thick Bat has the final say, cutting the two times in half, which ends up being one time. Hmm. I think maybe it's like that. What I've read is, uh... Hmm. Yeah, if it cuts the damage in half, it effectively cancels the weakness, so it's just neutral. Okay, that makes sense. We're pretty much only weak to flying and psychic. I remember when Axie and I were choosing what Mega Evolutions to do. Uh, I wanted it to be interesting. We were only going to do Mega Evolutions whose abilities are in this game. So that way it kind of feels like the real thing. That's why we actually are doing Mega Charizard Y over X. Because Mega Ch cause Tough Claws is not an ability in this game, but Drought is. Because Mega, Mega Charizard Y has Drought. So it'll actually feel like the real deal. You know what? I think I should probably put Sludge in slot 1. Hmm. I want... Honestly, I think even though Sludge is resisted, it's probably doing more than Tackle. So I'll just keep using Sludge. And the reason you're weak to Heracross is because you take and deal at least best neutral and stab Megahorn. Well, luckily we don't have to deal with uh, Heracross in this run. I know you may be thinking, but round two champion? Well, I don't do round two. I only did round two when I did those streams with Exceptional. And even though he is taking a break from Pokemon stuff to play Stardew Valley, uh, we do plan on doing another one of these. 
Oh uh, yeah, Andy, I don't do round two anymore. Only when I do it with him, just to make them more interesting. I just realized with my timer, uh, I actually forgot to add my splits. Just a sec. There we go. Well, uh, hold on. As for Mega Blast, with Mega Launcher is honestly just whatever. There's no Dragon or Dark Pulse, and Mega Launcher boosted Water Pulse is actually weaker than Stab Surf. Yeah, I guess what I should have said was we wanted to use Pokemon that had their abilities in this game. We only tried to apply that where possible because, like, obviously Mega Launcher is not in this game, but we had to do the three starters. It's just after that, we were deciding, like, what are the other Megas we're going to do. It was going to be some whose abilities that are in this game. Alright. At least I don't need to do antidotes. You know, Steve always makes uh, fun of me for going to the Pewter Center here, Pewter Mart here, to buy uh, emergency, like, potions, antidotes and stuff, but... In the last uh, blue backport we did, I think it was the second playthrough with Sceptile, uh, he ran out of potions on a trainer in Mount Moon, and he had to find Geodude to use Absorb on, which is how I was able to build such a huge lead on him. You know, I'm actually glad, unlike the regular Venusaur in this game, the Mega Venusaur here actually has Sludge on its starting moveset, so that feels really nice. Let me look at abilities that might make sense, but also not give it a benefit. I mean, pretty much the main ability we give to stuff, like, if their abilities don't exist, but we don't want to give it a benefit, we usually just give it Oblivious. It just prevents a track luck, but nobody in round one, like, notable, even has a track, so it's not like it matters. I mean, even if you include round two, the only person to straight... Well, I guess Lorelai's Jinx has a tract, but you can just make your Pokemon a female. And besides, the Jinx almost never uses a tract anyway. I mean, Agatha's Mischievous also does that too, but that's only in round two. I probably should get that. Oh, never mind then. I just remembered, uh... I can't use any held items this run, so that berry is kind of useless. No, I probably should keep Tackle for coverage. Hey, Paris, nice. Anyone's wondering about the item move, I picked Sludge. It was a tough call between Sludge and Curse. Honestly, Axew, I'm really glad you chose Sludge. Because Sludge is a pretty good early game move for this thing. Like, it makes it better than Tackle. I'm honestly glad you didn't give it Curse. I mean, Growth was just going to be better for this thing anyway. I mean, another thing that's also upsetting, uh, the TM for Sludge Bomb is only available in the post game, so we're never going to have access to it. Really unfortunate. Sludge is the strongest Gen 1 poison move. It is an egg move is probably the best choice. Yeah, it pretty much is. Honestly, I think if someone did the math, I think a stab resisted sludge still does more than tackle, because let's see, sludge is 65. With stab, that should be 97. Then you cut that in half. That's, uh, 48? 
I think. My numbers might be a bit off, but that should still be better than tackle. I mean, of course, unless it double resists. Plus, I kind of want to avoid the Gen 2 trend of curse and sweep. Well, you kind of can't get away with that in Fire Red and Leaf Green specifically, because, uh, like, who are you going to set up curse on? Alright, while I'm here, just because I know Rival 2 will be the harder fight, I'll do Misty first. Unless it's Geodude. Well, against Geodude, I can just use Razor Leaf. Speaking of which, I missed Razor Leaf. Yeah, Razor Leaf is definitely the GOAT. Honestly, in some ways, Razor Leaf got nerfed when it became a physical move in Gen 4, but I don't know. That's just it's a tough topic. Hey, John, the run's going pretty good, actually. Magical Leaf. Uh, same PP as Razor Leaf. You know what? It's five more power. Five more accuracy, and it never misses. I think Magical Leaf is going to be better. I mean, yeah, we won't have the higher crit chance, but it's not a guaranteed crit like it is in Gen 1, so I feel like Magical Leaf will be better. I probably could have taught it over Tackle, but eh. I don't think it'll matter too much, because I know uh, at a decently early level, we'll be obtaining, uh, what's it called? Uh, double Edge. Well, I don't know how helpful Double Edge would be because we can just get Return. But I think maybe early game Double Edge would help. Get the best Gen 1 grasp move and not like a there is literally no competition way. Yeah, Razor Leaf is definitely the best Gen 1 grass move. But then again, that's kind of a low bar, because what are the other options? Mega Drain and Solar Beam? Sorry, I'll be switching over to watch Steve, Ghost Marowak. I understand that, John. You suggested it. Go ahead and watch him. He's also thick. You know, it's gonna be so nice not being hit by Poison Point. It's gonna be awesome. Yeah, it is pretty much comparable to Blizzard, I agree. Especially if it gets the guaranteed crit. Hello, Sundown. What is a Mega Venusaur? Uh... In Gen 6, they introduced something called Mega Evolutions, where you give a certain Pokemon a Mega Stone, and then for the rest of the battle, it becomes like a more powerful version of itself. Higher stats, different ability. It's like it's Mega Form. Just in case... Going to get the guaranteed crit. Oh, darn it. If you fail a crit on Razor Leaf, you either got the 1256 or you hacked it into a Parasect. Uh, well, here's the thing uh, Razor Leaf has a 5% chance to miss. You also have to take that into account. But yeah, there is, with guaranteed crit moves, there is a 1 in 256 chance it just doesn't crit. Should I get secret power? I don't know, actually. Because Sludge is just straight up the better physical move. But I feel like for coverage in the first run, I should probably get it. Oh, 
Oh no, my attack's been dropped. Whatever shall I do? Very nice attack. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. I feel like, like, against these Pokemon like Oddish, Secret Power is definitely going to be better than either Sludge or, S or Rate Match Belief, so... I think it was a good idea I picked it up. Secret power has better PP, I think, but Sludge does deal more since it's stab and neutral. Yeah, pretty much. It's pretty much only going to be good for, like, the grass poison types, which I know the mid-game has plenty of them. Plus, it's going to be a while before return becomes any good. Alright, since I can't use the citrus... Uh, since I can't use berries, yep, I suspect Mega Venusaur would need to be level 65-ish for Lance. What makes you think that, Axu? I don't really know what my effective plan is going to be for him. Actually, wait. I know what the plan is. Sleep Powder Gyarados. Set up some growths. Sweet. I probably shouldn't have... You know what? I'm not going to need it. Uh, I did drop 902 frames just now, but it did stop. So, if it might have been that. But no, the amount of frames I was dropping yesterday, like, a simple computer restart was able to fix it. Aha, take that. Ax Annie, you really need to get a new internet cable. I mean, you could probably go to the local hardware store and just get one for like 10 bucks. I might actually get rest. Eight damage from Ember. Yeah, that's thick fat for you. The reason I'm thinking of getting rest is because Venus Mega Venusaur is very, very bulky, so it might get a use from it. We'll see. You don't get a minor as comparable to that of oh no, Dad's home. Sorry. I mean, you were complaining about your cable, not the internet. So I was thinking your cable was the problem. But yeah, a good cable's not going to fix bad internet. Oh, I just realized I didn't get YouTube chat on screen again. I really gotta find a better solution to that. Just a sec. There we go. Every time I make a new pop-out window, I have to refresh it in OBS, but I always forget. It's awful. Yeah, I've had to deal with really bad internet, too. I mean, not anymore, but the internet we used to have was incredibly bad.
Internet companies are a scam? A lot of them, yes. But I mean, what are you gonna do? Like, make your own internet in your own house? Also, interestingly enough, uh, much later in the run, uh, we will be able to get uh, Earthquake for Venusaur. I don't think it's going to help at all. You could make a pipe bomb, I don't know. Yeah, I would advise against that. Dude, I could have passed the guy, but I just stopped in the middle of it like an idiot. Yep. Also, for all the uh, YouTube members with the patches for the Blue and Fire Red runs, uh, every week when I put out the uh, new schedule for the week, I'll make a second post uh, for the members. It'll have the schedule on it as well, and then right below it will be the previous week patch files. Make sure y'all look forward to that, if you're a member. Why do I keep- I have- I'm just never gonna stop picking up berries. Like, it's just in my habit. You know, like, I'm just always gonna do it. It's just instincts. Unfortunately, Venusaur does not learn the tutor move for Rock Slide. It would be a really good thing if it did, but sadly not. Also, in terms of uh, special coverage that we could utilize... Also, in terms of special moves we could utilize uh, Growth with, our only special moves are Grass moves. So I think I can predict how Agatha's gonna go. Sleep Powder, Growth Time 6, and uh, probably Solar Beam. Ground moves are not useful in Gen 3 Kanto, especially against the Charizard team. Yeah, pr you're pretty much right about that. I don't know, what is going to be the strat for Ragatha? Like, part of me is wondering if, uh, if Mimic could have a play. Actually, since Agatha's Gengar always uses a turn one double team, I could probably Mimic it. And then I could set up my own double teams. Darn. Actually, another interesting move we can learn by Move Tutor, since uh, we can actually learn the Tutor Move Frenzy Plant on the Sevi Islands. Only Venusaur in this game can learn it. But I don't know, it's basically a grass type hyper beam. Like, I just don't think the recharge turn is worth it. You have match belief, so double team does nothing. I mean, yeah, I'm not worried about the double team. I'm worried about the fact that her, most of her team double resists grass. That's what I'm worried about. Like, I would probably just have to set up so many growths.
Get out of the way. Actually, I th I think that might just have to be the strat for Agatha, so I'll make sure to get some PP ups. Not often I encounter that guy by mistake, but it is really annoying when it happens. That is not what I meant to use, but hey, it still worked. I feel like my overworld movement has not been the best today. Honestly, so far, I've only used Sleep Powder once in this whole run, and it was just on Rival 2's Pidgeotto. But I mean, of course, once I get to the mid-game, it's going to become more useful. Speaking of overworld movement, I'm doing pretty well in Emerald. Yeah, I saw that uh, question. How are you getting times that low? Like... Some of your runs on average are like getting like 118 or so. Like, I've never even seen Scott get a sub 130. Like, what's your secret? Like, it's gotta be mainly your overworld movement being so efficient. Menuing is not efficient either. Hey, at least Sludge is a pretty good answer for the execute. Part of me wonders if for the League, the best set of moves is uh, Sleep Powder, Magical Leaf, Sunny Day Solar Beam. Well, that's not going to be good for Agatha. Because I would need to hold on to uh, Growth. Hey, Cubone.
Also, if you guys are wondering my nature, I'm not using a neutral nature because I pretty much know what my nature is going to be. I'm using plus special attack minus defense because our weaknesses for the... Our, our only physical weakness is flying, and we're going to be dealing with more psychic users. Plus, our defense is already pretty good on this, so I felt lowering defense is the way to go. Such a shame there's no natures that lower HP. If there was, I would use that all the time. A lot of practice, Austin and I use that run button. You mean just run around with B? That it? Did you, do you get good at the bike? I will admit, the bike in Gen 3 is a lot harder to utilize than in like Fire Red and Leaf Green, for example. But I still try and practice with it when I can. Okay, uh... This is kind of tough. Well, I will be getting Return, but I f it will end up being better than Sludge, so... Yep, goodbye Sludge. I do not use the bike, it's way too intense. I mean, agree I agree it's very intense, but I still practice because, I mean, Scott thought the bike in Gen 1 was pretty intense until I showed him it really wasn't that bad. I mean, I use the bike in Gen 2 now, and uh, I pretty much try and use the bike in every single one of my runs. I mean, you could just say that's because I play on three times speed, but even during, like, the blue randomizers with Steve, or when we did the crystal randomizers on four times speed, I still use the bike. Like, it's just going to take me more practice with the Gen 3 bike. Alright, we're pretty much better than Secret Growth at this point, so just get rid of it. Come on. There we go. Also, for Substitute, I don't think Substitute's going to be useful for Venusaur today, just because I need to hold on to a lot of different moves, but I don't know, we'll see. I feel like Sleep Powder is a pretty good Substitute for, for uh, Substitute. Oh, nope, can't use that. I was about to grab the Quick Claw just in case, but I can't, I wouldn't be able to use it anyway. things first. I'm going to go fight Erica. Yeah, I'm definitely not going to fight uh, What's-His-Face. I'm not going to fight Koga right away, just because I don't think that's going to be a good idea. But then again, Rival 5 really isn't any better. I feel like you can skip Substitute if you have a sleep inducing move. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I think sleep-inducing moves are better than Substitute. Just because, like, you'll be able to set up at least a few times. Oh, Mario, your stats look overpowered for this part of the game? Pretty much, yeah. They most certainly are, but when we get to the late game, it'll kind of balance itself out, but then again, we're using a Mega Evolution Pokemon, so pretty much always going to be overpowered. I don't know, what do you guys think? Like, do you think Koga or Sylph is the way to go? I'm not sure. Well, I mean, my speed is pretty decent. Yeah, I mean, we're all neutral to Koga, so... Yeah, I think Koga's the way to go. Yeah, you're right. 
How many badges you have? I see three, but an extra two pop up. Uh, yeah, that's because, uh... That's because, uh... It's kind of complicated why it does this, but... Let me get into a battle. To summary it up, uh... Where my overlay is reading the data from for the badges, every now and then, the specific spot in the game where the badges are move around. It's, it's like an anti-cheating measure. But whenever, like, it moves, it takes, like, half a second for it to catch up. So sometimes you'll see the badges flicker. Like that. But yeah, it's pretty much... The only way to get rid of it is to modify the game to where it doesn't do that. Really? Since his Pokemon have very high defensive stats, I think the best thing is to set up some growths and sweep with Magical Leaf. Okay, I'm just gonna have to sweep now. This thing's annoying me. As long as it does at least half to the muck. Not even close. Oops. That's a loss. Dude, he just kept waking up. And just waking up. Oh my god. Maybe I should just straight up return sweep. Yeah, I'll see how that goes. I mean, that's not a good sign. Hey, perfectly a third. Dude had insomnia. Yeah, pretty much. See, he's got the nightmares that wake him up at night. Uh. Alright, I gotta use sleep powder now. Man. Alright, there are a few extra trainers around here. Let me go ahead and fight them. Yeah, smokescreen is bad. I mean, I think sleep powdering and setting up some growths is definitely the way to go, but I just kept getting unlucky with it waking up all the time. Yeah, a lot of the trainers in this gym are quite good training. I probably should have done them first. I remember when I first played Fire Red, I was confused about the Psychic Pokemon Koga's gym. I was too, actually. It made no sense. Alright, I think... Just two, three growths. Uh, I had a feeling it would do that. Hey, nice crit. You know, honestly, I probably shouldn't have wasted time sleep powdering on that coughing because... Like, what's it gonna do? Smoke screen? Because I'm gonna, just gonna skip the accuracy checks. Yeah, I pretty much just took a few recesses to figure out the optimal strat here, but we gotta figure it out for next time.
if I want to, I could do Blaine before Rival 5, but there is literally no reason to do that, so I'm just doing Rival 5. Alright, I'm just gonna fight a couple of trainers in here, just the ones that are on the way, but I do want to be picking up vitamins. Mainly because I generally don't have many EVs, but using all of the vitamins can actually raise my friendship, so Return will start doing the maximum damage possible. Uh, I'm not paralyzed. Nope, just needed to heal. Yeah, this guy here, I really like fighting. And I'm out of attacking moves, because uh, my return's disabled. I wish all champions had a legendary or pseudo. I think a few of them have pseudo legendaries. Like, uh, well... I guess the champion in this game doesn't. Unless you count the round 2 Tyranitar. Lance has those Dragonites. Uh, Steven's got Metagross. Wallace has... Pretty much no pseudo legends. Uh, Cynthia's got the Garchomp. Yeah, not many generally do. Yeah, that little path that I take takes you to some of the most highest XP dense po trainers in the entire building. And then I can just go straight up to the stairs and just go around and get all the vitamins. Like youngster Joey. Wallace, Alder, Diantha, Bui, and, and Gita do not have them. Hmm, that's kind of what I figured. I couldn't remember if, uh, if, uh, what's his face? If Alder had any. Honestly, guess this is the one with pseudo legendaries. Right here. Alright, I'm gonna use all the vitamins. You may think that's not the most EV efficient, but uh, not only because, like, I don't really care about buying any specific vitamins, it also helps boost my friendship, too. See, my friendship's already 248. Joey's more of a champion than Gita. Yeah, Gita's not that good of a champion. Yeah, I think what I should be doing for the next run, just sweep the Pidgeot and the Execute, and then I can just set up my growths on the Alakazam. How much will that do? Not much. Yeah, two returns. He does so bad that someone made a challenge run where the challenge team was using her team. I mean... The Scarlet and Violet DLC did edit her champion team for the the post-game, like, uh, like that little school tournament thing. 
they did change her team up quite a bit, so they did make her good, but in the main story, she's bad. Look, hey, I mean, look at Gen 1 Bruno. I know, uh, what's his face? Uh, I know Madrybred did some of those challenges where, like, I can only use Bruno's team, but he just solos the whole game with Hitmonlee and maybe Machamp as a backup. The other Pokemon just never get used. So it's like, it really doesn't feel like a team run if you only use two of the five Pokemon. That's one of the things I didn't like about those videos of his. Gen 1 Bruno is a legend. He tries so hard. I mean, trying hard does not mean you're going to win fights. I've literally seen him submission himself to death. It is freaking funny. Alright, I'm not even going to save for this fight, to be honest. Watch me regret that decision. Yeah, that's why you play as Bruno Harkle, so service that you could Ice Punch a Dragonite to the Shadow Realm. Yeah, I mean, his Gen 3 team is still pretty good, but Hitmonchan's still trash. Hmm. You know, it's actually not often I see Sabrina send out Venomoth last. His team is good in Gen 3, Hitmon Chance just didn't complete. Yeah, I agree with that. Oh. Blaine next. Yep, Blaine's next. Honestly, he could be pretty difficult. I just have to hope his team stays asleep long enough. I'm actually going to fight this guy right here. Uh, this guy has three Sea Kings on his team, so if I have a Grass-type or Electric-type move, this guy is very good training for on the way to him. Sleep Powder, Growth, and Sweep. Yeah, you also have to remember, his team does resist uh, Grass moves. Like, the, uh, the Arcanine might need all six Growths. Plus, uh, on the uh, Growlithe, if I set up too much, he will use Roar. I don't know how the Fist even gets to you. The Lightning doesn't just launch you across the room. I don't know how all Elemental Punches work. I mean, what about Elemental Fangs? Like, how does Ice Fang work? Do you just eat a mint or something? Yeah, these guys are generally pretty good training. Like, if I have a good type against them. Worth to drop the other Pokemon in the center. I could do that, yes. It's just the problem is, it takes time to go get them back. I mean, then again, the alternative is just set up on the Ponyta instead. I generally only do the deposit thing for the champion, or the Pidgeot, because it has Whirlwind. And obviously I can't deposit stuff in the Elite Four. For Ice Fang, you dip your teeth in liquid nitrogen. Okay, that explains it. I can't use that, Carlos. Alright, Secret Key and Solar Beam. Alright, I think I'm going to fight one trainer just to get to level 50. 
just because I am level 49. And besides, this will be a nice little sneak peek for how we'll do against uh, Blaine. You use hidden power? Uh, I have no access to hidden power because I banned the ability for pickup because you can use the ability to get infinite berries and rare candies. And I feel like if I did a run that has to rely on extra rare candies like that, the runs will just come down to luck that's out of its control. So I just don't allow pickup. Unless the main Pokemon has it because it kind of has, you kind of have no choice because if you want to give it a berry, you'll have to accept what it gives you. Alright, that's enough training. Wonder how Steve's doing with his uh, Alolan Marowak run. Alright, at least that knocked it out. That's good. Sleep powder. I mean, another thing that does help here is our ability Thick Fat, so we're only going to be taking effectively neutral damage from his Pokemon. Dude. Oh. That's not fun. Let's just hope I can survive in time. Alright, we're just going to have to stick to plus five. Hopefully it's enough. I'm worried about the Arcanine, though. Of course. Freaking burn, man. <clears throat> Funnily enough, that was the only fire blast that even hit me. That was the only fire blast to even hit me. Yeah, but sadly, I can't just give it a, a Rost Berry because Mega Evolution Pokemon can't hold items because of their Mega Stones. Holy crap, again? It did it again. Technically, Blaine has had 100% burn luck with Fire Blast. And he's used two of them. I think Fire Blast is a 20%, 30% chance to burn. I know Fire Blast has higher odds of burning than other fire moves, but that's still annoying. <laughs> Alright, at least he's not 3 for 3. 10% past Gen... Okay, so the higher odds was only Gen 1. Okay. Alright, one more. Alright, sweet. <clears throat> so yeah, I pretty much guessed correct. Arcanine did need all six growths. You got double ice beam freeze pretty much. Yeah, that's really unfortunate. Alright, so I could go to the Sevi Islands for a rare candy or the Tutor Move Frenzy Plant, but I'm pretty sure we're not going to need it, so... I had a rival fight yesterday. They got three crits on stage one crit chance, and I missed two 95 accurate moves. Yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much sums it all up. You know what? Just because Magical Leaf has a lot of power points and I have an elixir, I think I might actually fight a lot of the trainers in here because we are going to have problems in the league. But Lorelei is going to be fine. Bruno will be fine. I think the champion, for the most part, is going to be fine. I'll just need to be able to set up all six growths. But, like, the main issue I'm worried about is Agatha and Lance. Well, I mean, Agatha may not be too hard. I just gotta get the Gengar to sleep, set up my six growths, and try my best to sweep.
Honestly, I think instead of teaching Solar Beam Fragatha, I should probably consider teaching either Giga Drain or Rest, because I don't know if I'll have enough HP. You would not need it unless you're fighting Wallace. I guess so, but then again, Frenzy Plant does have the recharge turn, which is very bad. Oh, if Frenzy Plant was a Water Spout clone, oh my god. That'd be one of the best grass moves of all time. Violence Untold. Well, a lot of Pokemon still resist grass moves, so it's not going to be that OP. Honestly, it's looking like so far my 107 under. It looks like it's going to be a bit close. If I were to guess right now, I would probably be in the in-between range. I used to sweep the Battle Tower with Eruption Typhlosion. Oh, I've used Eruption Typhlosion. It's incredible. Man, look at my EV spread. It's I'm only over 100 on speed, like usual, and defense. Honestly, I think that's a good thing, because we're going to have to deal with flying-type moves pretty soon. I wonder if Magical Leaf or Return is going to be better. Actually, technically, Magical Leaf would be better just because of my higher special attack. Alright, Earthquake. I can learn it, but I will hold on to it just in case. Yeah, next playthrough Soul Silver, I think I'll go with a special set again. Next Jota playthrough, I'm getting for Alligator. Yeah, for Alligator is a pretty good Pokemon in the physical special split. Holy crap, dude. Go to sleep. Alright, I think I'll just set up two growths. Because I don't want to set up on the Pidgeot for too long. What's next? Execute? Alakazam. Uh, return. Charizard, Sleep Powder, Magical Leaf, that was a crit too. You know, the fact it used Wing Attack meant that Flamethrower would have done less damage. Either that or he detected a crit. Hmm, I probably should have used three growths, but hey, I still first tried them. That's nice. I wonder if I should do any training in Victory Road. I probably should. I am a bit worried about Agatha and Lance. Hello, Psyduck. Magmars and Harkle still silver. Uh, I don't know if I'd say Magmar is better than Typhlosion. <laughs> Alright, I will need to get the candy here. I'll also need to go back and get the boulder candy. Yeah, I do know Magmar's in there. I remember it being a rare chance.
I think I'm only gonna fight the the one cool trainer here with the water types. I'll skip all the other ones. Actually, no, I'll fight the one with Chansey. Actually, maybe just this person, because I don't think... If I fight that other trainer, I probably won't get to level 57. I'm not going to fight an extra trainer if it's not going to give me an extra level. But then again, this person does have Chansey. You know what? That other person will get me to 57. There's another issue with Magmar, though. I can't evolve him in my cartridge because I don't have a friend to trade or a second game and second cartridge. Yeah, that's the sad, unfortunate thing. Alright, that's enough training. Also, if you guys are wondering, there is no such thing as a swag folder in this game. Shouldn't be an issue in Sacred Gold. Is that some sort of ROM hack? I'm guessing so. Alright, there is the Route 12 candy, but that one's kind of out of the way. I think I'll skip it. Yep, drop off my Pokemon. I'm honestly getting used to doing it at this point. I don't think I should use all my rare candies right now. Because thick fats mean Lorelei's not going to be that threatening. I think just set up two growths and just sweep. I think that's all I'll need. Plus the Dugon likes to waste the first two turns doing hail and safeguard. Lorelei is more weak to you. Yeah, pretty much. If this was regular Venusaur, I'd be kind of worried, because regular Venusaur does not have thick fat, but this one does. <laughs> I am surprised that lived. Normally that- look at that, that thing has 59 defense. In- In a- Magical Leaf with two growths still did less, so that's interesting. Dude, the seven-hour run you do is amazing. Lend me some stamina. Uh, what seven-hour run you talking about? Oh, the Zelda randomizer. Yeah, uh, I think... One of the first ones I was trying to do, uh, I was, this was very early on when I started doing, uh, Ocarina of Time randomizers. I was doing an all-entrance randomizer, and I had a personal rule. If I couldn't beat it in 10 hours, I give up. And one, I think one of those streams was 11 hours long. But yeah, I will do another Majora's Mask randomizer, because I want to get a lot more practice at it. But I'm not going to be able to do one this week, though. Like, normally, I have, I'm have i able to do streams on Wednesday for just stuff that's not Pokemon. But I have a, an appointment on Wednesday, so I won't be able to do it this week. I'll just do one next week instead. Alright, where are my PP-ups? I'm going to use them all on Magical Leaf. All right, let's see how well Agatha goes. 
I mean, I know eventually I want to do a, a combo randomizer. They actually make randomizers that combine Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask. Like, I want to do one of those eventually. I'm not going to do it all at once, obviously, because the average length for someone who's good at it is probably like 16 hours. Okay, I can use return on that. Really? Also, I wasn't paying attention. Uh, at four growths, did I one-shot the Gengar? I don't think I did. Well, no, that's a dumb question. I definitely did not. Oh, boy. Dude, that thing has 87 attack. That's awesome. I one-shot it with a crit. Oh, okay. Hmm, so at plus six, Magical Leaf pretty much one-shots everything but Golbat. Well, no, the Golbat I was at plus four. Honestly, I think in the next run, I should probably just use all my rare candies before Lorelei. <coughs> Alright, I'm gonna have to use the same uh, six growths and sweep strat. Honestly, I think after, uh, oh god. I was thinking maybe I could have taught a uh, Giga Drain over Return, but that would not have been a good idea. Oh. That's kind of scary. Well, not scary, like, I just need to use my rare candies now. All right, this will get it all the way to 70. <laughs> you know what? I'll try what Axu thought he would need to be for six for Lance. I'll do it at 65. I just realized, if I had used all my rare candies, I'll actually be able to outspeed the Aerodactyl. <coughs> I mean, I don't think it's really going to matter too much. Alright. Don't heal. Oh, wait. You got a citrus berry, I just realized that. Okay, I need to use all of my candies. Yep, we are... Yep, we did not hit the under, but we were pretty close to it. Like, at the under, I met Lance, so that was a pretty good guess, honestly. I mean, I predicted it would probably be the 1.7 to 1.10 range, the middle option, but we'll see. I mean, I don't know what the champion's gonna be like. Also, look at our speed. We are one speed faster than the Aerodactyl. Really? Oh, safeguard. Okay, I'm just gonna have to sweep. Darn. I freaking hate it when I miss Sleep Powder and it uses Safeguard. For those of you who don't know, a uh, Safeguard makes the opponent immune to status moves. So, like, I could not have put it to sleep. Yeah, honestly, Lance is pretty much harder than Agatha. Well, I wouldn't consider this hard. It, it has to rely on Sleep Powder luck for the, the Dragonite. 
I'm sure the two Dragonairs right afterwards will probably get one shot each. So it's pretty much only the Dragonite, because the Dragonite has very good special defense. There we go. Lance is also wise in the ways of the lottery, though Agatha is its master. I don't know, though. How is Lance ahead of Agatha in the Elite Four, though? Have you ever thought of that? Uh... Yep. Alright, so I think the main plan for... Pidgeot, I'll put it to sleep and just try to get rid of it. I don't want to set up on it. Dang. Calm down. Uh, I'll... S I don't know. It is not a good idea to set up on that. Mm. Alright, it, it... Oh. Uh, Magical Leaf. Now return. And I'm dead. Okay, so... Yeah, we're hitting the over 110. Okay. Alright, return. Does half, that's good. One shot the Alakazam. Alright, return. Turn. Crit, okay, I'll take that. Uh, sleep. Uh, there's really no reason to set up growth on this fight. I don't think there's any reason to set up growth. I mean, I'll pretty much do plenty of... Okay. Uh, it's probably going to end up healing. I should probably set up one growth. Yep. 110.53, 9 reef. That's level 71. Yeah, the level's caught up. Lance uses 15 Dragonites. Well, I mean, in this game, he only has one Dragonite. Honestly, my 1-7 to 1-10 prediction was pretty spot on. I think how this can be improved, I need to use all of my rare candies before Lorelei. Well, honestly, otherwise I wouldn't outspeed the Aerodactyl. But then again, not outspeeding the Aerodactyl is not a big deal. Like, it would only really kill me with a crit. I think I'll use all my rare candies before Lorelei, but I will go get the, uh, the Route 12 candy. I will go get that, so I'll have 11 candies. And, uh, Lance, I pretty much just have to use the six growths and prey on the Dragonite. Hey man, I just wanted to let you know your content's great, Keo, for good work. Hey, uh, FC Edits, thank you. I really appreciate that. Glad you enjoy. So, and then for the Champion, the only reason to set up growth is for the Gyarados. So I guess uh, I could just put the Pidgeot to sleep, use one growth, and then knock it out. But I don't want to spend too much time on the Pidgeot because of Sand Attack. You know what? I'm sure it'll be fine. I made a safe state here because I knew I wouldn't be changing my uh, nature. Not teach return so you get to the champion? Uh, no. I need return for the mid to late game. Besides, why would I choose to not teach it? That doesn't really make sense. Well, 8%. So one person voted over, and that one person was correct. All right, let's put in a new poll. Oh, uh, yeah. Return is just very overpowered in Johto, but honestly, that's just because of the level curve. 
All right, so I think in terms of like potential time save, uh, I mean, we could probably save a couple minutes, but that's like best case scenario. I'm gonna leave it at under 107. You guys are just gonna have to decide if, uh, if my overworld routing and better luck could get me the one, 107. Well, I had faith and chose under the hour of seven. Hmm. Alright, we are comparing against our previous splits. Alright, let's get started. Three, two, one, go. Alright, so the plan for the Brock split is going to be effectively the same as last run. Just minimum battles up to Brock, defeat the Light Years Trainer to make the Route 3 easier, and then uh, just sweep through Brock. I like how you just said 67 minutes instead of 107. Honestly, this thing has performed better than I thought it would. Like, it had some similar struggles that the original Venusaur would have had, but the original Venusaur would have had a much worse deal against Blaine, for example. Because, but Thick Fat on this thing is just a lifesaver. Like, it's incredible. Alright, you know what? I can actually get some decent time save early on. Wait, why does my timer say 5... Uh. Oh, I'm an idiot. Did my time start at 4.32? Oops. I'll fix that for when I finish the rock split. I'll fix that. Really? You know, at that health, the Pidgey is supposed to be like a 95% chance. Yeah, that was pretty unlucky. Alright, I think I'll fix it now. Uh, let's see. 620 minus 430. That's... I'll just set it to... Uh... I'll set it to 150. I'll set it to two minutes. There we go. Now the time is fixed. Yeah, it's what I get for not for forgetting to not enable splits again. Really? Come on, I have potential time save in this early game, and I just keep running into things. I'm gonna defeat that Kakuna. I mean, look how much experience it'll give. 40. Nice. Yeah, Blaine did have two very lucky burns.
Okay, that thing is doing a lot of damage with Poison Sting. Razor Leaf. Alright, we are going to have a time save of 5.3 seconds in this split. Garden King's Blade. I don't know what that is. Razor Leaf. Oh, is that its Japanese name? That's a pretty cool sounding name, though, if it is. And I really wish Bug was still weak to poison, because Bug Wing being weak to poison makes sense because you use poison to kill bugs. I mean, poison being weak to bug makes no sense, but I wish they had kept the bug being weak to poison thing. Like, it just would have made poison types in this game just so much better. But then again, bug types were kind of trash anyway. No, you just spout random lines that I think sound cool. Oh, okay, so you're just spreading misinformation. Got it. I'm asking with you. Uh... My real time is 17 seconds over. Oh no, whatever shall I do? I don't think it'll be a big deal. Alright, I'm gonna skip bullet seed this time, because it was not useful at all. Why did I pick that up? Really? I almost never encounter that person right there. Yeah, I definitely have a I definitely have a somewhat busy day today after this stream is over. Uh, I'm hoping to get that Garchomp video for Heart Gold released tomorrow. It's almost done being edited. How I do edits now is uh I start by editing all of the voiceover. I don't add any music or anything. And then I do all the video clips. And then at the very end, I will put in all the music. Putting in all the music is like really quick for me. And without the music, I'm like 22 minutes in. I'm at the first playthrough, Johto Lance. Like, I'm about to talk over Lance. And we all know how easy Kanto is. Like, I'm effectively going to skip over that section and go to red. And uh, I'm pretty much nearly done with it. I can tell you the final length of the video is going to be roughly 33, 34 minutes. So uh, I don't think it should take me that long. I did have to delay it by a week because I was going through some uh, personal trauma, but I'm pretty much over it now. Like, I was still able to do the streams, but I did pretty much need to take a weekend off. I'm actually not going to heal at the center just yet. Fight Misty first. 
If you don't get double team spammed by Surge, you won't. It's Garchomp. The only difficult one is blue. Uh, that's not true, actually. Uh, Garch, I can definitely say, uh, Heart Gold for solo running is harder than you think. Alright, save 22 seconds this split. Nice. Let's see, I think in Johto, uh, the first hard gym leader, I think, was Price. Just because you gotta remember, I'm four times weak to ice. Flare, I remember, was pretty difficult. Hey, nice crit. Appreciate that. Dude, is everything gonna be a series of one-shots? Nice. Four times weakness is a hell of a drug. Def well, it's not the good kind of drug. I mean, that's kind of a misnomer. There is no good drug. Man, the whole early game just feels so much smoother right now. Like, I don't think I was one-shotting things with Sludge earlier, but I am now. Flintstone gummies. <laughs> I don't think that counts. I don't think vitamin supplements count as drugs. At least I don't think they do. It's a joke? Oh, okay. Lots of defense and speed early on. Uh, I can tell you the defense is from the Metapod and Kakunas. The speed, uh, the Bellsprout gives speed, the Pidgeys and Rattatas give speed, uh, Spiro gives speed. Like, there's just a lot of things early on that give speed. Like, I've noticed this in almost every game I play. Or, a lot of Pokemon get very early speed EVs. Just because of all the early flying types. Oh, Bellsprout gives attack? My bad. Ekans gives attack. Honestly, I don't really think EVs matter too much for this thing, except for speed. But then again, like, if I just get to level 70 for Lance, I will just pretty much outspeed the Aerodactyl with just barely, but it's not like outspeeding it's a big deal. The wing attack doesn't do much damage. Alright, gotta get secret power. Black Pokemon gives special defense EVs is odd. I can actually tell you where the first uh, mandatory special defense EV is. It's the Innocent Bystanders Drowsy. It gives special defense. I did not mean to do that. Who else uses Drowsy? Uh, there are a few Rocket Grunts that use Drowsy. Half of Koga's gym uses Drowsy. A lot of people use Drowsy. You guys are probably hearing dogs barking, huh? Yeah, 70 power base, power move early on is very nice. Hey, you guys want to see some? You guys have probably seen this, but look. Look at that ledge. There's a bunch of dead pixels on that ledge right there. 
I have no idea why. Like, I don't think it's on any other ledge in the game. Like, you might try and find one, but from what I've been able to tell, that's the only ledge where there's that black deadline right there. Like, I don't know why it's there. Might honestly be an error with the sprite. Really? Alright, so on the SSN, I didn't even use rest last time, so I will skip it. The only thing I'm going to do is just rush straight to the rival. Not going to save here. I'm very confident Sludge is going to one-shot this thing. See? There we go. Honestly, this... I don't know how controversial of an opinion this is. I think Steve might agree with me. I think early game poison moves are better than early game grass moves once you're past Brock. Because, I mean, obviously grass is better for Brock, but... Like, for all the bug catchers everywhere, and for, like, just everything else, like... Grass just resists a lot of things. Or, a lot of things resist grass. I mean, like, the Oddishes and Bell Sprouts, they double resist grass, but they only regular resist poison. Or no, they don't res They're neutral to poison. Right. Yeah, early game, especially Sludge, because Sludge is one of the more powerful poison moves in this game. Yeah, in Gen 1, it dealt super effective damage to the bug catchers, too. I really wish they kept that. Like, bug being linked to poison made so much sense. And the birds, too. Yeah, you're right, Mario. Minute and 20 ahead. Nice, I'm really catching up time here. Honestly, I'm still good on power points. After I get the uh, bike voucher, I'm actually going to skip the heal and cerulean. Honestly, early game poison moves is actually better in Johto because... Not many things early on in Johto resist poison, except mainly Team Rocket, but they already suck anyway. Alright, I'm gonna YOLO the hiker. Let's see if uh, if I can skip him. Yeah. There we go. That Venonat just loves to live moves. Don't know why. Just loves doing it. Uh, yes, EC. There's there are a lot of experiences that I missed out on here in Johto. I look forward to a second chance. Yeah, honestly, replaying the Pokemon older Pokemon games is quite a nice experience. I mean, the way I do them, like I especially like it even more. 
But honestly, I couldn't do the replaying with different teams just because I wouldn't have the patience for that anymore. But definitely like the new like solo playing aspect that I'm doing with them. It gives it makes you kind of learn new things that, with them that you didn't know before. There's a, like a gnat or a mosquito around me. Gen 1 at 4 times speed is so good. Silverman's feel like the ideal way to play. Hello, G-mans. Um, most other people play them on 4 times. This is actually 3 times speed. Just because 4 times speed, like, running around and biking is just too hard for me to control. 3 times just feels more natural to me. But still, it is pretty fast. Damn it. I encountered this guy again. Like, wading through the waters of in volcanoes of Hoenn, immersing myself in the midst of Sinnoh, seeing how they've aged since my days of Hisui. Nice HP. You never got to play the Sinnoh games, huh? Oh, that's okay. I actually never played the Hoenn games until the remakes came out. Just because when I got all those, uh, those, uh, DS and GBA games that were handed down to me by my older siblings, they never handed down, like, a Ruby or Sapphire, not even an Emerald. Like, they had Fire and Leaf Green, but not Hoenn. So I never got the chance to play them until 2014. Not the Fire and Leaf Greens. Three times speed is best visually. Too many colors moving too fast. Yeah, I feel like three times speed is like the perfect balance. Like, you still get to see things. Why am I using Sludge on this guy? You've never played Hoenn at all either, huh? I don't know why a lot of people say that Oras was a bad remake. I honestly think people that do are honestly full of crap. Like, because I thought the games were really good, and I don't have the Hoenn, like, nostalgia bias, because I never played the original Hoenn games when I played them. So honestly, with remakes, if you never played the original, I think your opinion on them is more valid, because you're not blinded by nostalgia. That's just my opinion. I missed the entirety of the Pokemon on the DS. I'm playing Sun and Moon for the first time. Oh, you are, huh? Be prepared for a crap ton of cutscenes. I mean, come on, Annie. I don't think BDSP was a great remake. I thought it was good. Like, a bunch of things about it were questionable, but there were a few things that they did that really improved it, but... It's basically, like, it's basically, like, three different changes that are really keeping it up. If those three changes weren't in there, I would definitely say it'd be in D tier. But I think right now, if I were to rank him, I'd put him in B tier. Which would probably where I would rank, like, Ruby and Sapphire, uh, Gold and Silver, uh, what else? Diamond and Pearl... Yeah, I rank it at the same spot as Diamond and Pearl. Or no, Diamond and Pearl is D tier. BDSP, I think, is B tier. Yeah, I play this on three times speed just because four times on GBA specifically is very hard for me to control. I used to do three times GBA, four times for Game Boy, but I didn't like playing on two different speeds for my leaderboards, so I chose to make them all three or all four, so I just chose all three. So I play Game Boy on three times speed, but 
when Steve and I do those back ports or those randomizers, I up it to four times just so he doesn't have to adjust. You never played Diamond and Pearl or the remakes? Which should I get first? If you haven't played any of them, I mean, Platinum, if you haven't played the DS games, I would probably recommend Platinum. I, I still enjoyed BDSP a lot. Steve just finished. Hey, John. I mean, BD the main three improvements that Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl had that I absolutely loved, they made the underground way better. Uh, they expanded the ability for you to catch way more Pokemon without trading. And uh, the music in the game was generally pretty great. Plus, I like the fact how they added the Arceus event in it, which was previously unreleased. That was an, Those were the three things I really liked, but if they didn't have those three things, it'd be one of my least favorite Pokemon games. Like, it, it's being held up for me just by three things. Like, I just wish there were more things holding it up. Like, I think if there were, people wouldn't be hating on them so much. The champ and Misty were his wall. Not so really. What was his thing for Lance? Did he just get a lucky Hydro Pump miss? Oh, well, I thought you were playing four times. That explains why I thought your times were not in sync. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, most people like Scott's thoughts, and I think J Rose does it as well. Uh, they do four times speed because four is like a nice even number. But I decided to just convert to three times speed just because, like, it didn't feel like as quick. That's that's I have I have zero context. I just like Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, honestly, I think if you've never played Sinnoh, I would recommend Platinum if you never played Sinnoh. It's just mainly because I think Platinum has the better story than Diamond and Pearl did. The gym leaders definitely had better teams. So inferior to Platinum, let alone Platinum Hacks. I'm not going to recommend ROM Hacks to people. I'm really not a fan of ROM Hacks. Level He had to level up to outspeed the Gyarados and Thunderbolt. Yeah, because the Alolan Marowak had more special than regular Marowak because we got to apply the Chansey rule to where Marowak's special defense became its special. So instead of 50 special like Kanto Marowak, it had 80 special. Which is still bad, but it must have been enough for the Thunderbolt to one-shot. I think every other stat was the same, though. Yeah, like if I was on 4 times speed right now, like I would not be chatting to chat that much. I'd be just be focusing. There are some good ROM hacks, but not for solo runs. Yeah, my main problem with ROM hacks... I don't like playing games that aren't officially released. 80 specials usable. Yeah, it's at the point where, like, it's good for four times Thunderbolt, but you really wouldn't use Thunderbolt on, like, regular water types. I should have deleted Sludge, but it's not gonna matter. I'm gonna teach Matt. I'm gonna teach Return shortly anyway. I'll just teach it over Sludge. When I first played Fire Red, I tried to catch that thing with Pokeballs and frustrated was dodging. I did the same thing, actually. I mean, I don't think Iron Mon is a ROM hack, is it? Well, I guess it technically is. I'm not really a fan of Iron Mon, because the whole thing is just a giant RNG generator. Like... It's just straight up not Pokemon at that point. You're basically just playing a game of numbers. I really do not like the thought of that. Like, what skill even is there with Ironmon? Like, you're just dealing with luck and numbers. Like, I just don't understand. I know M. Tiberius was talking about the joys of Ironmon with us yesterday, but... Honestly... 
I don't get how they're fun to people. I mean, at least with solo runs and stuff like that, at least there's strategy. Like, there's no... There's barely any strategy to Iron Mon. It's just hope for good luck with stats and Pokemon. I mean, one of the reasons I just like solo runs is because I used to speedrun, like, the main series Pokemon games, so it kind of just feels like that, except more fun. Plus, I get to do this on speed up, too, which is nice. I mean, yeah, but other than that, it's just one giant luck fest. I mean, regular randomizers can be a giant luck fest, but at least with the Pokemon you encounter, you know what to expect from them. You know, it's actually kind of a good thing I still have Sludge for Erica because I don't- I think Sludge is going to be more powerful than Return anyway. So I guess it's a good thing I still have it. Well, I guess it's not like it's going to make a difference. It's a speedrun, but you don't have to use the optimal Pokemon. Uh, yeah, that's the thing. What is the point of randomizing the base stats? I legitimately do not understand. Not training in Erica's gym? Uh, no. The training in her gym is honestly pretty bad. Because, like, three-quarters of the Pokemon in this gym are just weak first-stage Pokemon. I mean, Cool Trainer Mary down there can be good, but I'm not going to waste my time with her. Alright, now I gotta teach Return. Alright, I need to defeat every trainer in this gym. Yeah, Nido Queen is like if you haven't done solo runs before, Nido Queen is actually a very good one to start out with because it starts with Body Slam. It's in the medium slow growth rate, and Poison Ground is actually a pretty decent type combo for Gen One. Plus, it gets a lot of decent special moves too, like Thunderbolt. It gets Ice Beam. You can get Rock Slide and Earthquake. I would really recommend it. Yeah, it pretty much is triple seven. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Dude, look at all those modifiers on my stats. Oh my- dude! Flinch. Flinch. Dude, what is this luck? I am fucking rewinding that shit. No. That was so fucking dumb. Oh, that's my first reset. Dude, three sand attacks and three paralysises. I kept getting paralyzed and I was getting flinched too. Like, I was getting the para flinch treatment. Honestly, Mewtwo would just straight up destroy everything. Like, it would give you a false sense of, oh, solo runs are easy. 
I think starting off with Nido Queen or Nido King is definitely a good start. Did someone say Mewtwo? The good thing Shadow's not here because Shadow would just talk about how she loves Mewtwo. Can I get Pokemon at level 350? Uh, no, because they are hard capped at 100. Although in Gen 1 with glitches, you could get a Pokemon with a level up to 255. With glitches. Mewtwo makes solo runs look easy. It makes solo runs look like a joke. Even modern Mute, like even in modern games, like the Mewtwo can pretty much keep up with the power creep. It's that good. Okay. All right. So the main plan here, I'll put the coughing to sleep, but then once it wakes up, I'll just continue setting up anyway. Bruh. All right then. I'll just start setting up. Two. Three. Four. Yeah, keep using that. It's totally gonna help you out, you know. Yeah, but I don't want the jackpot. I want base expectations. I lost my mudkip. Can you guys find it? Hey, uh, John, can you go look for, uh, Musalam plays mudkip? Legend says if you say Mewtwo three times in a mirror, shadow appears. Oh, God. That'd be nightmare. <laughs> Alright, time for a Sylph. Also, right now, I'm three minutes ahead of my last run. Everyone had Mewtwo and Kyogre. I don't blame them. Kyogre is pretty freaking overpowered. Especially with its guaranteed rain. What about Groudon? Eh... Groudon's really not as good because it doesn't get stabbed from its fire moves, but Kyogre gets stabbed from its water moves. And Groudon has more weaknesses. Groudon's more handsome. I mean, I can agree with that. I mean, Groudon's speed's still good, but compared to Kyogre, not too much. Honestly, I'm kind of considering, like, in these Fire Red backports, we should probably do, like, a special stream where, like, uh, we do- it'll probably be one playthrough, but we'll have a Primal Groudon versus Primal Kyogre stream. What do you think of that, Axu? I think that'd be pretty fun. Okay, calm down, Annie, calm down. <laughs> I don't want my moderators acting sus. <laughs> I'll have to ask Axie what he thinks of it though. He helped, he pretty much does all the backporting for me. I do all the backporting in Pokemon Red and Blue for Steve and I's runs, but for Fire Red, Axie does all the work. Which I'm really appreciative of. Don't tell me you haven't seen Hot Lava and said I... Uh... No, because it would burn your tongue off. Damn it. That's a mistake. This guy has five weak Pokemon. Like, he is not good to fight. Kyogre is a special attacker with stab water and can get thunder. It sets up great and thunder skips accuracy checks. Groudon's a physical attack, but the solar beam and fire moves are all special. That is pretty much it right there. In a double battle, Mewtwo and Kyogre synergize better. Rain and thunder are known by both of them. 
That would make sense. When I did Kyogre, I pretty much skipped Thunderbolt and just went to Thunder. It was awesome. Thunder is epic, yes. Uh, got all those. Eighth floor iron. Bruh. Okay, this guy is a wheezing. That's not bad. Gen 3 sprites either look great, or like the Pokemon is anxiety. Pretty much, yeah. Honestly, I, m I will say this. A lot of the sprites in Emerald are kind of ugly. I think out of all the Gen 3 games, I think Fire Red and Leaf Green have the best sprites. I'm going to skip that Calcium. Alright, that's all those. In the Ruby remake, I couldn't have Primal Groudon Kyogre in the same battle. Why, because you couldn't trade it? Or does it just not let you? You can only Primal Reversion once per battle, I'm guessing? That's probably the reason why. If you did send them out both in battle, which one would Primal revert first? No, the game blocks you. Oh, really? Did not know that. Sleep Powder. Wrong move. I am dead. I'm not even going to bother with that fight. Okay, I need to set up a couple of growths on the Pidgeot. Bruh. One. And two. Sleep. What kind of Fire Leaf Green National Dex dipshit decided that? I don't know, probably because it'd be too broken. Honestly, Sandstorm being a rock type move doesn't make any sense. I agree with that. Maybe it's because technically sand is just a bunch of really small rocks. And again, the whole ground is made out of rock. I know, I think Wolfie VGC made a video one time explaining why the rock and ground types really shouldn't exist at the same time because they, they have very similar weaknesses anyway, and the ground is effectively made of rock. He thinks it would have been much better if uh, they were all like one type like the Earth type or something. Plus that way, Golem wouldn't have the four times weaknesses it has. I honestly kind of agree with him. Like, those two moves are just way too similar to each other. All right, do I have that Hyper Potion? Yes, I do. Alright, I need to use my vitamins. Where they made Groudon ground and gave it sun so that Solar Beam hits. Grass spawns are laughing so hard when Groudon comes out and has Solar Beam and Chlorophyll. Yeah. Hey, my friendship's maxed out. That's good.
Alright, it looks like I am gonna lose time on this split. I think that was because I accidentally did extra trading in Silk. Plus, I had two resets on the rival. Or no, one reset was on Koga. No. The one reset on the rival. Alright, so instead of being three minutes ahead, I'm only a minute twenty ahead, but... I should make up a lot of... T oh, wait a minute. I remember this from Eggstream. Uh, apparently, you can still dig out of Sabrina's gym. You think some mons have the wrong abilities? I agree with that. Man, I wish Rampardos got Rockhead. Oh, imagine Flareon with huge power. Dude. That'd be so broken. Annie always finds something to complain about. Oh, Axio, I'm not sure uh, you uh, heard what I asked, but what do you think of a uh, special versus stream where I do one playthrough each? Uh, Primal Groudon versus Primal Kyogre. What do you think of that? I mean, we pretty much know that Kyogre will most likely win, but Primal Groudon would definitely put up a fight. Because Groudon gets the part fire typing, too. Yeah, I'm not sure when I do it, though. I'll have to get back to you on a date. Oh, I thought one of these guys get level 50, but apparently the extra training I did was enough. Is Flare Blitz even a move in Legends Arceus? That's my question. I know in Legends they got rid of a lot of moves, because they really cut back on the moves. What about their abilities? Uh, their abilities are effectively Drought and Drizzle. We're not going to be able to completely clone their abilities to, like, where, like, fire moves do no damage or water moves do no damage. We would have to completely, uh, add in a new weather effect, and I'm just not sure how to do that in Disassembly. Wait, no. Set up on the pony top. Two. Three. Four. Five. And six. Is Sui and Arcanine learned? Really? Okay, that makes no sense. Uh, Axie, Axie is only working with what the game gives him. Well, we're back to being 3 minutes 49 seconds ahead, so we're doing really good so far.
Honestly, Andy, Steve would just hate Flare Blitz just because it does recoil. He has an internal bias against recoil moves. Even if they're good. Like Flare Blitz and Brave Bird. Give it Water Absorb. That is definitely a new one. I mean, didn't its abilities also give, like, fire moves a boost? Actually, I wonder if I could use Game Hook to freeze the battle weather and keep it permanently sunny. That'd be something worth testing. Like, I know where the weather is in Game Hook and, like, the turn counter. What if I kept them frozen at, like, one turn left? but it never goes down to zero, and I kept it permanently sunny. I wonder if that would work. Because if I can get that to happen, then we could give him Water Absorb and Flash Fire. Which is honestly kind of a funny thing. You know, I'm really curious, though. Uh, I think as soon as I finish this run, I actually will go test that. I mean, normally with the uh, game hook in Gen 3, there's a lot of memory addresses you cannot edit because a bunch of it is encrypted, or it constantly moves around, but the battle, the battle structure with all the live updating stats and stuff is not one of them. They're talking about giving Grot on Water Absorb instead, making the weather in the background. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Because the main thing with its ability is that Groudon's immune to water moves, and that Kyogre's immune to fire moves, which... I mean, the whole immune to fire moves thing, Kyogre really doesn't care about that, but... Groudon, it really does matter, like, not having the four times water weakness. Like, that could actually make them both put up a good fight. Flare Blitz is the only good physical fire move. I would pretty much... It's the best physical fire move. I mean, Fire Punch is weak. I don't know if they introduced any other, like, physical fire moves. I know Heat Crash is one, but that's a very selective move. The alternative is Check Notes Flame Wheel. <laughs> Man, this Needle King just won't die, will it? Three fifty-six ahead. That's good. As for Mega Rayquaza, I'm just going to do the Thick Fat to make it only two times weak dice. Actually, does it, doesn't Cloud9 exist in Gen 3? Or, you know, that's Rayquaza's normal ability, I think. If I remember correctly, its ability Delta Stream, like, gets rid of Flying-type weaknesses. I think that's all Flying-types, though. Like, I'm not sure how you would replicate that. There we go. It's a good thing Rival 6 doesn't use potions. Hmm. Honestly, I have an idea on how to make Rayquaza work. Uh, I might try and look at the Fire Red disassembly. I might see if I could give, uh, Ray like, Ray Mega Rayquaza, like, it's... I'm gonna see if I can give it, like, its own unique type that, uh, 
that is neutral and resists everything Rayquaza normally does, but isn't weak to those types. I could probably just, like, go in the disassembly and just replace it. I know it's not the stuff that actually normally uses. But it'd be a pretty cool way to replicate it. Because we want to try our best to backport abilities that affect a Pokemon's weaknesses. I mean... The triple question mark type... Yeah, but the problem is, like... The triple question mark type... I don't think it has any weaknesses or resistances in the code. It'd probably just be neutral to everything. Honestly, adding a new type is not as hard as you think. You just have to update the type table, and, uh, you just have to give the type to someone. Well, I mean, it's not as simple as that, like, you have to make sure, like, other places where types are referenced, you gotta add the new type, too. But I've gotten more experience with disassembly, so I could do it. I mean, adding a new type will still be a lot easier than, like, modif- like, adding in a new ability. Like, with its own functionality and stuff. Oh, that is not the right person. I was supposed to fight the water person, but... Oh well, this person will work just fine. I just want to get to level 57. <clears throat> Yeah, this is definitely going to be some time loss. Well, then again, like, the main thing I'd have to try and learn is how the fire red disassembly is structured, because it's not going to be structured the same way in, uh, as the red and blue one, just because there's a lot more stuff in it. But I can probably read it and make sense of it. Uh, I should have 10. 11. Okay. Alright, I lost a bit of time this split. I'm 333 ahead, so I've got a lot of time save in the league. I just hope I do a better job. Growth. Ice beam. Growth. Hail. Growth. There we go. Sweet. Uh... No, the red and blue one still had an actual structure, but stuff was kind of messed up. Like, it's really hard to add stuff in the red and blue disassembly just because the games had such little space left over. Okay, that was my fault. Oh, come on, wake up. Well, I deserve that. That's what I get for using a, a sleep powder on something that used safeguard. Yeah, I'll definitely set some growths up on the hiker. I agree.
Man, I just like how little damage Ice Beam is doing. Although I definitely opened myself up to potential freezes. Honestly, I think editing the Fire Red assembly will pretty much be easier, because I think there's actually going to be room in the game for adding things. Return the Jinx? Uh, no, I can't. I've tried that before. Return does not one-shot the Jinx at this level. And if I have to use Growths anyway, I'm just going to use Magical Leaf. But yeah, we did think ahead of that, though. Hey, stay as- oh. Oh well, it's not like that really matters too much. Yeah, I'm sure the disassembly will be nice and organized. I mean, we could technically use disassembly to make the backports, but Axew has a bunch of programs that make it incredibly easy. So we just use what he's using, but I want to make something special for Mega Rayquaza. I want to actually try and replicate the, the Mega the Mega Rayquaza and the Primal Forms. How do you find Mega Venusaur? Uh, like the sprite for it? Uh, we just found the sprite on uh, other people made it. I mean, how do you get it? Uh, you have to play a game that has Mega Evolutions in it, like all of Gen 6 and Gen 7. And you just have to give a Venusaur a Venusaurite, and then you just give it to it and Mega Evolve it during battle. It surprises me that I could one-shot the Gengar, but I can't one-shot the Golbat. Even though they're both double-resisted to, to grass. Like, it surprises me. Oh, okay, luckily that missed. Oh, how do you find it plays? Uh, it, it's very mid. Like, it still has similar struggles that regular Venusaur does, but Thick Fat really carries this thing. Alright, so now here, I need to use all my rare candies. I'm hoping I still outspeed the Aerodactyl. Oh, yeah. Well, this will be cutting it close. Speed Tide. Darn. Oh, well, it's not like it's gonna matter. No game will ever reach the mod ability of Doom, mostly because of how developers actually designed the game away to support their ease of use, but Jeffrey really makes an effort to catch up. I agree with that. Man, in the last run, I was at 174 speed at level 70, but now I'm at 173. I might have had, like, an extra three speed EVs or something. Like, that's insane. Dude, stop waking up. Stop. Bruh. Go to sleep. There we go. Let's see if we can win the speed tie. And we do. That's nice. Alright, Dragonite. It's all up to you now. There we go. Sleep is not really broken in later gens. Yeah, in the newest gens, you can only stay asleep for to a max of three turns. Like, sleep is generally not that great. At least compared to these games, that is. Alright, so if I remember correctly, don't even bother setting up growths. Actually, the only Pokemon that... Okay, I'm resetting that. The only Pokemon that mattered was Gyarados. I just needed one growth. So, I'll put the Pidgeot to... I'll just put the Pidgeot to sleep. Maybe just use one growth. 
Holy crap, dude. Okay, I should not set up the growth on the Pidgeot. Just get rid of it. Because I am not progressing with a sand attack. That's just a dumb idea. Dude! Stop missing sand attack. What is this, hypnosis? Come on. There we go. I like how it kept using Slash instead of its fire moves. That's awesome. Really? Come on, that's not cool. That's also not cool. That's triple not cool. Oh my god, dude. Dude! What is this? Dude, I kept missing my sleep powders. It probably saw fire. Maybe it detected a slash crit. Or maybe Fire Blast would have just done that little damage. I don't know. Okay, uh, the Gyarados will definitely do something bad. I need to put it to sleep. There we go. 105, 29, 6 resets. I didn't see the level. Honestly, honestly, John, uh, they've been nerfing sleep every single generation from Gen 1 all the way to Gen 5. In Gen 5, it's the one to three turns we know. Sub hours definitely possible. Good luck. Uh, I kind of disagree with that. Just mainly just because these fights take a long time. Yeah. Yeah, we got the under. That's real nice. Yeah, guys, here are the splits. Like, we started at, like, fair, the same, similar time to Brock. We lost some time in the Sabrina split because of Sylph training. We lost a bit of time here due to that Victory Road incident, but we did really good, actually. Alright, so let's uh, put this on our leaderboard. All right, let me uh, go ahead and get a picture. All right, I need to look at Game Hook. What level was I? Seventy-one. That's a pretty high level for one of these backports. I mean, it just shows you how bad Lance was. All right, and the game time was 3.03. So let's see what positioning gets us. All right, that puts uh, Mega Venusaur in 11th place. Bare about a minute slower than Chi Yu, but it's faster than Chien Pao. But didn't perform as good as Roserade, but you want to know why Roserade did so good? It was, I believe it was in the fast leveling group, or if it wasn't, it was also the fact it got extra sensory as an egg move, which really, really made it destroy the game. What is up with it? I don't know what's up with, uh, with him, but hey, he's contributing to the stream. Yeah, we've done 19 Fire Red Backports. If you guys are wondering about the Reshram, Zekram, Solglea, Lunala we did with Egg, uh... I haven't ranked those because we did those on four times speed with a different rule set. So those aren't going to be ranked. All right. Well, thank you everyone for stopping by. I do appreciate it. The next stream will be tomorrow where 
Steve M plays like the killer and I will be doing a blue backport with Cobalion. So Cobalion's definitely going to be a fun Pokemon to use. It's medium slow. Okay. So anyway, thank you all for watching. I'll see you all next time. Bye.